All right, team, welcome back uh, to the day 10, and in fact, it's going to be project 3 uh, for uh, the first KDF 1 project. Okay, So here is what we have, team. As per the schedule, I just have five, uh, six more sessions left, but what I may need is I may need one or two sessions more uh, to complete whatever needed. I may also either do, let's say, about five, ten minutes additional per day if it's okay with you uh, to catch up some of the lost time. And uh, uh, then, uh, if need be, I'll extend by one or two days uh, at the end. Okay. All right, team. So, keyword-driven framework. Here is what uh, I had in mind for this. So, what we're going to do is we're going to use YouTube.com, right? And we will go to a very simple step of uh, test cases that we can automate using keyword-driven framework. What is keyword-driven framework? I'm going to explain to you as we go along a little more uh, patiently. But at the moment. All I'm saying is, let's say you have a website like YouTube.com and we have certain test cases uh, to test and see how the functionality is working. Be able to recognize if something is going wrong in it and be able to automatically report it. But what exactly is keyword? How do we develop this whole framework? We're going to go in a very step-by-step -step fashion for that. Now, a couple of uh, test case, in fact about two, three test cases that I wanted to take up is one, let's say I want to search out here and let's say we want to search for a word called QTP framework, okay. Once you do this and you click on search, do we see the results coming up, okay. Uh, do we see this word search results for QTP framework and how many results are we getting uh, for such kind of a search term that we use. That is one uh, testing scenario that I had in mind. The other is let's say that a user wants to create a new account then what are the steps involved to do it and how would they do it? How do we automate this process? Most of it can be done. One thing that we may not be able to do it are these capture images. The whole intent about this word verification is to prevent automation tools or the scripts to run in the background and create multiple uh, fictitious email accounts and so on constantly. And that is what is the prevention that they have as a security. So you cannot really overcome because that's the whole intent for it. But if this this particular testing scenario is in a development uh, phase, then what can happen is you can have a temporary code that is given to you to test it on a different server altogether, not the production. And you could, instead of uh, seeing what is here and typing it manually, you could enter the default keyword uh, every time and it accepts that at least uh, while the application is still under test. The other test case simple is, uh, how do we sign into Google or YouTube account using this and what comes up once you sign in? How do, how do you verify those 